Are you looking for a way to control your presentations, your live streams, or your slides without using your hands? Some hands-free control, that sounds pretty amazing. And with the new release of the Stream Deck pedal, you can absolutely do that. So that is what we are talking about today. It's how do you use the Stream Deck pedal? I'm going to show you the Stream Deck pedal, which I actually just used right now to make that title appear. So we will take a look at it in action in my studio setup. So you will see how I'm using it. Also share a few different ways I have been using the Stream Deck pedal to run my virtual workshops. What do I like? What would I avoid? And what are some of the things that you should know if you are considering adding this to your setup? And if you have never met me before, my name is Kat and I help people to make more professional and engaging online presentations. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. I really think if you can streamline your setup so that you can focus on making connection with your audience, that's a wonderful thing. We don't wanna be fumbling or fiddling and looking all around trying to see what do I do next? How do I change my slide? Am I pressing the right button? Well, with a pedal, you truly don't need your hands and you don't need to look down. You've already decided in advance, what does this do? and how I'm going to streamline this. Now, because it's a stream deck, because it's a programmable pedal, just like a programmable key, you can do a lot with it. I'm not going to get into everything. I'm gonna focus mostly on how I use this when it comes to running presentations or also helping to run my live stream. But there are a lot of things you can do. Anything you can do with a stream deck, I think you can do with a stream deck pedal. Now that I say that out loud, <laughs> Don't quote me, but you can definitely do a lot. We're going to look at the interface. How do you actually program it? How do you add different profiles? And what does it actually look like live right now on the floor? Do you wanna see it? <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the Stream Deck pedal. And I just used it to go to the next scene. So here is the pedal and here's my carpet, which carpets are a good idea for sound reduction if you have a home studio, by the way. And this is, this is what the pedal looks like. So you have a live feed right now of it. And yes, this is my foot. And yes, I decided to try and pick a sock that matched my colors. <laughs> so right now I have this. So this is my next scene. This is my main camera. And then this one is uh, this scene right here, the me and the pedal. For example, it's gonna disappear for a moment. And actually, wait, I have a pedal only. The next scene I specifically set up so you could see if it's just the pedal and not me and the pedal. So if I just press this, I've now switched the scene so it's just the pedal. And if I wanna go to me and the pedal, I can just click this button. So you can see how it is just helping me to run the show. I am able to just keep looking straight forward at the camera, making eye contact with you while I control that. And if I then wanna to go to main camera, I can just go to the middle and here I am on the main camera. So that is an example of how the pedal works, pretty straightforward but let's actually take a look. What is it? <laughs> Where do I get it? What is going on? And for that, I actually do have a little scene set up here where you can see the Stream Deck website and they're asking me for my email address, which they already have. So the Stream Deck pedal, it retails for, this is $114.99. I believe this is the Canadian price. Or maybe, I'm, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm in Canada and right now this website is saying $14.99 but I'm actually not sure that that's correct. I don't know, maybe someone maybe someone in the chat can help me out. So this is what the pedal actually looks like and you can kind of see some different examples that, that look much more pleasing than my setup here. And you can see the tactile control, they go through. The other thing that's nice, they have some examples, for example, gamers who are actually using their hands. This is a really helpful way to use it. Also musicians, so here's an example where you need to have your hands, but you might be streaming or you might be, maybe you wanna change if you're using a digital music, uh, you could change the page for what music you want or if you're presenting. And you can have chain reactions because you can have multi actions and that is something that you can do with a regular stream deck, the keys for your desk, but you can also do this as well. So there's lots of great stuff on here and there are also profiles. So what I actually did is I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I have been using the Stream Deck because you obviously are limited. So if we take a look here, I really only have three options. Personally, I kind of like that it's simple because what I have found is that if you are 
running something and you're, you're kind of in that mode where you're trying to pay attention and focus on the task at hand, you don't actually want to have too many options for, okay, wait, which one does which? It really is best if you can simplify it. And so that is the one thing I like is it, it is minimal. Some people might say, I want to do everything with my pedal. Well, I think there are actually companies that do that for accessibility reasons or needing to actually use your hands. But in this case, I like the simplicity of only having a couple of options for how you program this. Yes, you can program a multi-action. So if I were to press something, I could trigger a chain reaction of a few different things to happen. 100%. But I find for my use case, which is typically running a workshop or presenting, I like to keep it simple. So what I wanted to do is show you a few ways that I use this. So this is one of the setups I have used a few times for running a workshop. This is me having three different scenes. So on my streaming software, I will have three scenes that I bounce between. So me and my slides. So kind of like I just showed you before where I'm beside the website, it'd be similar, it'd be me beside the slides. The middle pedal is just going to my main camera if I wanna make a point and I wanna get the slides out of the way. And sometimes I wanna zoom in on those slides so that people can see them really clearly, especially if I have fine details. So this would be a good example of how I have been using it for workshops when I'm actually using slides. However, many of you know that I don't actually use slides a lot. And in some of my workshops, I actually just kind of go next slide, next slide, next slide, because I will set up scenes with my animations, with my bullet points. And that's, that's actually how I prefer to run things. So it depends on what I am teaching. So in that case, if I am running something with next scenes, that's usually I just kind of put next scene. Similar, for example, to a live stream where I would have next scene is on the right, main camera on the top, and then maybe a demo scene like today, where if I press on that right pedal, I'm gonna to go to the demo scene and then I can go to the main camera. So that would be an example of how I would set this up and actually how I have it set up right now for the live stream. Now, another one that you could use if you are someone who is presenting is perhaps with slides, you could actually have your next slide and your last slide or some people might prefer to have the middle be the next slide because that's the primary one. In this example here, I actually put the option of a footrest because you can actually have a footrest and I'm gonna get to that in a moment. And then the other one I wanna share with you is maybe Zoom. For example, if you are using Zoom, you could program your button and have a profile. Now this is just one example of how I would probably use it. Mute, unmute would be the middle pedal camera on and off because sometimes, you know, if you have to step away, <laughs> you want to turn off your camera. And personally, something I like to be able to do quickly is open and close the chat. So I would do that with another key. So that's an example of just one option, but really any hot key or a shortcut that you can do, you can program there. So you can think about your workflow. What are the things you want to quickly go between? So let's get back to this idea of the footrest. Because what happens when you buy the Stream Deck pedal is you actually get a few goodies. So I have some of these, I'll hold up a couple. So you get a bunch of different options. I don't know what this sounds like to you in the microphone. So the box comes with these. Most of these are springs. So you can actually change the tension. So let's see if we can, I don't know if that, yeah. So you have a little spring sets. They have a default spring set or so the amount of tension for your pedal, but you can actually customize that. So find what it is that you like and you can adjust. But the other thing that it does come with is a stopper. So if you want, you can actually have that middle as a foot rest. So if you only wanna have the two options, just put these in the middle. Now, obviously you don't wanna have to unscrew the back, put in the stopper, uh, like screw that back, put it over and over and over again. So I would say use that option if you do plan on just mainly using two different options and having the middle as a foot rest. I think it's actually nice to be able to just move your foot side to side. So that's nice that they give you that option and that includes, that's included in the set. So I wanted to make sure that you understood that. When it comes to the interface, let's take a look at setting this up. If you have ever used a Stream Deck before, you'll probably recognize this interface. 
So this is how you can change the different options and how you can program your Stream Deck pedal. If you have a Stream Deck already, you can actually toggle between your different Stream Deck products. And so all of them are in the same configuration. So I'm on the Stream Deck pedal. This is the one I am currently using. So you can see I have next scene. For me, that's really helpful at the start of a stream. I know I'm gonna have my title. I know I'm gonna have my introduction and then I can pop into the next slide. And then from there, I knew primarily I'd be switching between my main camera and maybe my demo scene, which is me and the pedal. So that live feed that I'm trying to show you. And, but I could change this up. <laughs> you know, we could, if we wanted to have this scene, let's do that. So let's change this. I am going to, instead of having next scene, now right now I'm using Ecamm, same thing applies with OBS. You can pick the scene you want. So I would actually specifically say run scene. I'd like to replace it. And here I get to pick which one, and it's actually this scene that I'm on right now is the Stream Deck. So I can now use the pedal to go to that demo scene, and then I can go to the right, and I'm back at this Stream Deck scene. So it's very quick to be able to replace or swap out what you want. Now the other thing is that you can have different profiles. For example, if I click over to Zoom, I can now see these set up. Now Zoom is closed right now, so I don't. it's not active. But this is an example of showing or hiding your camera, muting or unmuting your microphone and opening and closing the chat. But there are many other things you can do. So if we go back to this live stream, if we wanted to set up a new profile, actually let's do that. New profile, it will show you this little welcome button and you can just delete that. <laughs> that just takes you to the Elgato help page. And really anything down the side here you can do. So maybe you have lights that are controlled with, that are programmable. You can have your lights control. You can have, you can set up Twitch. You can have, let's say for YouTube, you could have your chat message. <laughs> you can see how many view. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. I wouldn't put that on the pedal. That is, it shows you how many viewers you have and you can't actually see anything on these pedals. So that's not a good idea. But you can see that you have different options for the actual stream deck. You could switch profiles if you wanted to have maybe two pedals and then switch profiles, but you have to pay attention to which profile you are actually on. But here you can see the ability to do a multi-action switch. For example, if I have a multi-action that I pull over here, I can say that I want to go live. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna say go live. And then maybe I put just a really short delay. So, you know, got this short delay here. And then maybe I want to, uh, oh, I don't, I might need to, I didn't think this through. You could have a tweet that maybe says, I'm live, uh, I'm live right now. So that would be one example where you go live and it sends a tweet to say, I'm live. That would be one example. I don't know if that's the best example I could use. You could probably have, I was gonna say do not disturb. That would actually probably be using something like the shortcuts, but this is how you would program it. Maybe you want a system key. So if you wanted to add a hot key, you could drop it here, say what is the hotkey that you want for the programmable action. Now let's say you're not streaming or presenting or anything like that. You could use it to say open a program. So if you want to just quickly be able to launch something or maybe switch to see your calendar or something like that, you can really just program this and have the control that you want. But ultimately, it's really easy to set up I like the simplicity of only having a few options because frankly, you shouldn't be confused about what your foot is doing. You don't want to suddenly sit there and kind of think, wait, what does the foot do? That is the benefit when you have something like the Stream Deck on your desk or something like a Loop Deck where you can just look down and you can actually see what's programmed on those keys. So it should really be something that is essential, simple, basic that you want to do, whether that's going to the next slide, whether that's going to a specific scene, muting yourself or unmuting yourself, keeping those really fundamental things that keep the flow of what you are doing. So that's really an overview to the Stream Deck pedal. I would say my opinion on using it now, and we can go back, see it one more time. Oh, what? I changed my profile. <laughs> Rookie mistake. There we go. So after having this for a month, so. I like it for my workshops. I like being able to just kind of quickly have the pedal and go between the main camera, the demo scene, et cetera. 
That to me, I find extremely helpful. My personal issue with it is that I'm standing right now. So a couple of things. One is that you actually might see me shift my weight. <laughs> so sometimes I kind of hold on to the desk before I move my foot around. And I mean, that's okay. I don't mind that. It's actually probably better for my back not to be standing exactly upright and not moving. That's not ideal. You want to be able to be fluid and flexible. My problem is that my desk is at standing height and then I have a drafting chair that I sit in when, I, when I'm seated. I can't touch the pedal. So, I mean, that sounds like a really silly thing to wonder about. Here, let's go back to my main camera. But it is a drawback because I am not in a sit-stand desk. I am just straight up in a stand position. And when I sit, I can't reach it. It would be nice. I would probably use it more if I was, I was able to use it both sitting and standing. However, I have used it for some live streams. I used that last week because I was showing demonstrations with the Stream Deck. Oh no, that was two weeks ago. I'm showing my, my setup, but I have been using it for live streams. It's really nice to progress to the next scene. You don't really have to think, you just press on the pedal. That's the type of thing that I don't wanna look down. I just wanna be able to do. And so anything you don't wanna look down, anything that's essential, I think these are great ways to use it. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna keep using it. I just, right now, only use it <laughs> when I am standing up and presenting. So I hope that was a helpful overview for you to understand what it is, how it works, some suggestions for how you can use it, and how easy it is to actually program the keys and what are some of the options that you have. And ultimately, just like the old school clicker of next slide, <laughs> last slide, it just helps you to run your presentation so that you don't have to, you don't have to look down, you don't have to fumble around, you don't have to use your mouse to go to the next thing. I really do think that this kind of tool can streamline and it can help you to run more professional and engaging online presentations.